So what's the problem that I put in my title? The problem of intercultural communication is that using the definitions I just gave you, you will realize that members of different cultural groups have learned different systems of meaning. That means that intercultural communication is going to be a lot more complicated than monocultural communication. The minute you have people with different assumptions about what they expect and about how to interpret what occurs, you have a problem because you're going to have misunderstandings, mismatches of meaning that you don't expect, you don't necessarily always even notice have happened. So that's the problem. Now, why intercultural weddings? Those are all the reasons for weddings. Why intercultural specifically? Even the people who study weddings, none of them had ever studied intercultural, except a few people who wrote handbooks on how to do it for other people like them who'd had them. There are a few of those out there for very, very, very specific groups. Intercultural weddings are a particularly complex form of a ritual that's already very complex. All weddings are identity displays. By definition, what you are doing is standing up and saying, I'm a grown-up in this group, and I'm going to get married to this person, and now we're going to be a grown-up couple and take our place in this group. How do you do that if you've got more than one group that you need to stand up and say, I am a member of this and this and this group? That gets very complicated. So that makes it a good research topic because it's complicated. Everybody will tell you you want a very simple research question. You really don't. Life is not simple. You want to figure out a question that's not too terribly cumbersome, but you want a context that's rich and complex. Also, these couples, the couples who have intercultural weddings, are the ones who are the most thoroughly concerned with making it work. This is not an exercise I invented for my research. They want to make it work because they're planning on getting married and they'd like it to be a success. Very few people get married who think this is going to last a year and then we're done. Or this is a piece of paper, we'll get divorced next week. There are some technical reasons it does occur, but it's very rare. And because they're highly motivated and they're going to figure something out, if they figure something out that works, maybe they figure something out that works that's going to work in other contexts. Because really, I don't care about weddings. Weddings are just a good research site. Weddings are not my topic in terms of what I care about in my life. Weddings are just a good place to go and ask my questions. So let's get back to the problem of intercultural weddings that was my title. Each family wants adherence to their cultural traditions because they want everybody in the room to see this is my child and my child can do whatever ethnic group, racial group, religious group we are, display appropriately. And you all understand that identity is a display, right? It's not who you are biologically, it's who you show that you are, that we are interested in communication most of the time. So we're looking at identity displays, and weddings are a really good place for it, but when the bride's family wants one thing and the groom's family wants another thing, okay, now we're stuck. So the question becomes, how do we do two things at one time? That's a really good question. There are lots of times in my life when I want to know how to do two things at one time. I imagine lots of other people have that problem. That's part of why this is a project that can lead to some conclusions you can take elsewhere. The short answer is that symbols are things that stand for other things, and they can convey more than one meaning. And the technical semiotic term is polysemy. So couples can use symbols to convey multiple meanings. Now, that means that symbols permit ambiguity. I'm going to come back to this. Let me show you pictures. So ambiguity is not a problem. In communication, in the US at least, ambiguity is always treated as a problem. Ooh, we don't necessarily understand each other. That's bad. We need to sort it out. We need to make sure we understand each other perfectly. What this research suggests is that that's wrong. Maybe we need to encourage a little more ambiguity a little more often.